Hi, I'm Madeline T. I'm from Highlands High School, and my research question is based on occupational therapy and how it should be used in all schools. My question was, how have the advancements of occupational therapy improved the health of students with disabilities? Um, a little bit about my research. Occupational therapy um, it differs from other types of therapy, like physical therapy, um, because it focuses a lot on creative thinking and problem solving. And that's because cases differ from patient patients. So, like with physical therapy, if you sprain an ankle, normally it's the same for every patient, but different kinds of therapy and stuff like that. But for occupational therapy, um, you have to deal with different kinds of different types of um, special needs. Like, there's differences between autism and autism. So, that's different. Um, I specifically looked at students with special needs and looked at Kentucky schools because my school is located in Kentucky. And I looked all the way from elementary to high school and like the differences between uh, different ages. And a quote about occupational therapy. Um, occupation has been recognized as a means of treatment for mental and physical illness since the 18th century, long before the term occupational therapy was first used to labor. So it's been around. Um, my purpose and hypothesis says so students with special needs who begin occupational therapy at an earlier time in life will reap more cognitive and physical benefits than those who begin therapy later in life. So that's why I kind of looked at elementary and high school age students um, as opposed to like college age students because you would see more benefits when you start in like, elementary school. Um, and that's why I believe that all schools should have occupational therapists provided for students with so that these students can read the benefits. Um, my literature review. So one of the studies that I looked at was by A. Craig, and um, that looked at the transition from early childhood into mainstream schools for students with disabilities. And um, that actually supported my hypothesis that students with special needs who begin occupational therapy later or earlier in life have a smooth transition into school. And then that's a quote. Another study that I looked at was by Amarelli, Katrina, and Sato. Um, that didn't look at schools as much, but it looked at war and rehabilitation, so looking at soldiers coming back and um, how their mental trauma and physical trauma were like linked together and how patient therapists can help them. And that was interesting and helped my research because even though it wasn't for students, that was still how occupational therapists dealt with patients. Um, another study that I looked at was by Shepin and Vegas, and that was a case study that focuses on question therapy for children with Down syndrome. And that also supported my hypothesis, and that's the case study that I'll be looking at um, with charts and stuff later. Another study that I looked at looked at um, autistic children and how sensory integration therapy helped them. Um, and traditional SIT therapy. The occupational therapist exposes the patient to sensory stimulation through repetitive activities, and those activities get harder and harder as the occupational therapist goes on. So they can see like what level um, that supports the patient. And those benefits are both social and physical. And methodology, um, I didn't do any surveys because it kind of go into the um, not um, ethical. And case studies by other researchers and occupational therapists, that's what I use in study. And an issue that I came across was finding recent studies. So a lot of the studies were not like from this year or the year past, they were from like 10 years ago, but they were still beneficial. And the main thing that helped me was my mentor. Um, she was an occupational therapist and she works for the Fort State School. So one of the um, sources that she gave me was a textbook for um, occupational therapists that work in the specifically. My results. Okay, so this is the study I was talking about by Zubis and Chen Um The study focuses on children with autism, like I said, and equestrian therapy, which is um, where they use horses to help students. And Down syndrome creates motor deficits that can cause lower reaction times. So the study kind of shows how 
flash over here to pop that. So this is a chart. Um, I'll make you see. There's two different children that they use in this specific study. And um, they, did two they did three different positions. So facing forward on the horse, sitting sideways, and then facing back on the horses. And this is for, um, this shows the two different tests, so before and after. It shows that the students both show improvements after um, the question. So this is child A, and um, what they look at, what they mean when head and jump control, when you're sitting on a horse and the horse is walking, you have to like engage your core and, and like keep your head straight. So that kind of helps with students um, or children with Down syndrome because they have troubles with that. So child A it shows benefits after and same with child B. Both show better head and jump control. During the experience of question therapy. And so that shows how occupational therapists help with finding those motor skills. So, for the discussion, most of my research did support my hypothesis that um, students would show greater benefits if they start um, occupational therapy earlier in life. And students with special needs who begin occupational therapy at an earlier time in life will bring more benefits. So, those are both physical and cognitive. And, um, an occupational therapist who helps students may interact with many different ages and temperaments, so that's how they need to be prepared for all of the different situations. So that's what I was talking about. Um, that's how they differ from like this School based therapists can work alongside teachers and parents. So when looking at a student um, that may have special needs, a lot of times they need to work and see what that case specifically um, needs to look at. So, like, finding gross motor skills, holding pencil, running. A lot of those things can help with occupational therapy. And um, all of these different types, a lot of times occupational therapists help to look at future of goals. So that's kind of what I look at for future occupations. Um, occupational therapists help students with disabilities set goals, and um, students with special needs but possibly go to college. So looking at Northern Kentucky University, they accept students with special needs, look at programs, and um, they can actually graduate from college, which is pretty cool. An occupational therapy students especially set that as a goal and help them live more independently. Um, in Kentucky, schools are responsible for looking at students' needs and deciding whether a physical therapist, occupational therapist, or speech and language therapist can best accommodate that child's needs. And so um, I believe that an occupational therapist most often supports those needs because they kind of deal with the physical and So a lot of times they work with fine growth skills and gross motor skills. And the field of occupational therapy is growing more and more every year. And as it grows, the ideas and the human minds coming into that field of figuring out more ways to benefit people. And here's my <clears throat> awesome. All right. Uh, a couple questions for you here. Uh, first one. Um, how did you evaluate the sources you collected to make sure they'd be credible, valid, and reliable? Um, I used sources like PYBL and EBSCOhost that are provided by the school to help me determine the credibility and the sources. Okay. And um, other than um, helping individuals with disabilities, what other real world implications? Uh, could your study possibly uh, relate to? Well, like I said, I looked at a study with, um, that helped soldiers that were like, traumatized by war. So the study could also help look at that. And um, the different kinds of therapy, I'm not sure if the question therapy could help, but maybe the sense of integration therapy, depending on how traumatic their experience was. Okay, very good. And which of your sources was most influential? Um, and how did that source imp uh, influence your final conclusion? Well, based on research, I would say the study by Shepard and Lucas helped me the most because I really understood what they were talking about and how um, people with Down syndrome have different kinds of um, needs for fine and gross motor skills. But I would say that the biggest help was probably my mental condition provided me with literature that uh, looked specifically at. Okay. 
Thank you.